a project coming up, which I'm very excited to hear about. So with no further ado, here is Dr. Eddie Wither. Cool. Cool. <laughs> the world of ego. It's amazing when we get together and people, you know, when I talk to different students and everybody kind of flies around the world, like, hey, who's going to foot the bill? My wife's asking me, she's like, uh, you're going out there, it's going to cost you about $1,500, and what do you get in return? Great business question, she's an attorney. So it's a great business question, right? So she's like, um, help me, what do you get in return? And I said, let me in the body. See how crazy this is? This is why I travel, I've got to tell the story. Maybe one of you just get this and go, ah, mom and dad, we need to talk. I finally figured out what chiropractic is. I listened to this crazy bald guy from St. Louis that kind of rang with me. Maybe that's it. Somebody's going to resonate with you and it's going to hit you and you are just going to get out of my way. I got lives to save. And that's what's going to happen. And so I graduated school. I, got, I developed an irritable bowel at 17. Stomach's cramping. I thought it was bad cheese fries. Right? I'm in high school. And I had stom stomach ache from 17 to 23. I had diarrhea. Graduated high school with a third grade reading level. Uh-huh, monkeys, I mean, I got a 10 on my ACT. Monkeys get fours, right? So I'm struggling terribly at school. And I graduated, I was learning disability classes my whole life. I was just that ADD, crazy, go off the walls kid. That was me. Now I'm just a focused ADD. And so with that, I meet a doctor at 23 years old while I was going to school to be a cop. I start dating his daughter, and then I go to the dinner, I get to their house. Boy, here it comes. So I go to the bathroom, and her father's like, where's Eddie? And she's like, well, his irritable bowel's acting up. He says, he doesn't have any irritable bowel. He's got pressure on his brainstem. And I'm in the toilet going, what's wrong with my brain? You know, and I'm sitting there, what? And I come out of the bathroom, like, you have pressure on your brainstem. What are you talking about? He says, let me tell you a story. And he told me this story. The brain tells the nerve, tells the cell. So if that's this, if life is being trained, why is your colon at age 17 did it develop a no problem? What happened from age 0 to 17? Years of the body breaking down into sickness. And all of a sudden we reveal into a symptom. So when you adjust somebody, what's the first thing that goes away? Their symptoms, but they still have a problem with their spine. You don't fix spines at all. You're not a spine doctor at all. Bones don't keep you alive. Nerves do. You're a nerve doctor. So I'm going through the airport, funny story, right? And I put, take everything out of your pockets and I take this, I say, I got a bone to pick with you. It looked like a gun, right? So he goes through the radar and it looks like a gun. I'm like, oh, it's a femur. What do you need this for? I said, I'm going to talk to a bunch of students, future chiropractors, on how this functions. They're like, what are you talking about? I says, well, it's a long story, but I'm in security. I says, the power that made you is the power that's going to heal you. That power lives in your spine. Go see a chiropractor. I got to get out of here. And I walk. <laughs> so simple. I just planted a seed. We all have this. This is a cross section, right, of your femur. This is where our blood is made. Agreed? How? Man's trying to figure this out. It's interesting. Where's the nerves? You guys do dissections here, right? So if you do dissections, do you see any nerves going into the bone? I mean, I've never, maybe the neurologic system of the periosteal tissue has nerve supply through it. But how does the body know in four months, every 120 days, the red blood cell? Right? That's how long it lives. So I'm in class. I'm learning about this. Where's the old blood go? If a red blood cell only lives 120 days, where's the old blood go? So we would all come up with our own little theories. Every 35 days you have new skin. Every 12 months you have new bones. It's unbelievable. Five to eight minutes you have a new stomach lining. 90 days new heart. It's, all these things are occurring right now without you thinking about it. And you just go, hmm. I'm kind of healthy. I feel good. How do you know? What are you doing to prevent a cancer and tumor right now? Well, I'm eating really well. Oh, I'm out meditating. All those things are good. But what's the premise of life? Your nerve system. And no other doctor can do what we do. And we want to give it away. And it makes me boil. When they write articles, like the Forbes article that just went out, devouring us, making us look yabic. When I tell you my life has changed because of this, I went to struggle from school, remember I told you? I've C's and B's my whole life, moved to vertebrae, A's and B's. 11 years of college, I lose my hair, and I'm telling you a story. Right? It's changed my life. And when I met my wife on Match.com, she was 31 years old and eight pres prescriptions. 31 and eight prescriptions. And here I was, a raw vegan, right? Totally opposite of them, not that anymore. I learned that marriage is compromised. 
And so with that, when I met her, I'm telling her the story, and she's, like, she's a lawyer. She's like, I kill you guys in court. I've never lost in 14 years to a chiropractor. I said, I would devour you in court. It's not my ego. I would crush you. And she said, how do you know? What do you do? I'm an upper cervical doctor. I monitor brainstem function. Um, what? Yeah, it's the neurologic supply between the brain and the body. And so I have a gauge that I run out your spine, and your spine comes up onto the computer screen. So when I make an adjustment to your spine, I get a before and after neurologic update, objective data to know that I know as your doctor that I've done something constructive for you. Bring me to court. I kill him because there's data. Why? That's science and chiropractic. Now you're really out over here. What is that? That's 1905 thinking. I still passed through that. I had a massage two weeks ago. Great guy, Korean guy. He's just unbelievable. I go to get a massage, and he's just doing just stretches my low back, and he does a double knife edge, wham, and my whole spine goes, Pfft. and I'm like, Whoa! right, and I'm like, all right, I better get checked. Concussion of forces. Did he throw my adjustment off? Now, did he perform an adjustment? It cavitated. Chiropractors believe if a cavitation is an adjustment. That's an adjustment, it's $40. Cavitations are not, my ankle's popping. Oh, adjustment, $40. Cavitations are not adjustments. But we hear, did you get it to go? Yeah, I got it to move. So, right? We all, our ego gets real big when we're the great adjusters. So there's a Try 2 student on my student nights on Thursday nights. They're crazy now. Try two students sitting there with her husband, and they're on the fence of suing the school. They went to a senior intern, took his neck, and went, wham, and blew out a disc in his neck, and his arm is completely numb. What do you say? What do you say to somebody who's hot right now at chiropractic? My wife's going to chiropractic school. They're supposed to help people. This guy's in great shape. Does CrossFit four days a week. Great shape. And he's, got, he's like, numb. Doc, it's numb. What do I do? What do you do? Tap his ass. Maybe. What do you do? So when I look at this, you check if they're subluxated, so we have to define what a subluxation is. BJ did. There's four characteristics of a subluxation. Anybody know them? Four characteristics that make up a subluxation, according to BJ Palmer, the developer, the rule maker of chiropractic. Baseball has four bases. Chiropractors want to put another base in the middle or maybe put a PT bay in, in between second and third. Or, hey, by the time you get home, let's do some click, click, click and rub, rub, rub. I mean, so baseball has four bases, and that's the game we play. Chiropractic has rules, so that's the game I play. These are my ego-based rules. I follow Eat, Sleep, and Drink Green Books. He said, you do this, you get my results. Well, I should get better results. I should be better than him. Our technology blows his out of the water. We should be able to be better. Right? Four things that make up a subluxation. And the people are going to think about it. Just a position of a vertebrae above and below. Right? So it's misalignment of a vertebrae. Occlusion of a foramen. Are you with me so far? Interference with the nerves. That's three. And the most important one, number four, the most important one, interference of the mental impulse. So how do you gauge the interference of the mental impulse? BJ had an instrument, the electroencephalo neuromotemograph, EEG machine. Lay you down on this machine, put probes along your back, Mrs. Jones. Think about moving your leg, but don't move it. And the machine would produce a grip. Get her off the machine, scan her spine, run a cervical spine scan and a full spine scan, take several different x-rays, do a ton of data on these people, all the data, and then make an adjustment and rest them three hours. How long do you rest after an adjustment? 20 minutes. 15, 20 minutes. He rested them three hours. My patients, they rest two hours. After their, their adjustment, they rest two hours. I also gown them and scan full spots. That's how I do it. I would have to two hours, that, that's how we roll. After that, I scan them, right, to make sure that I've done my job and make sure the nerve supplies work in the right way. So with that, after they got adjusted and he scanned them, all right, Mrs. Jones, the neurologic system is clear. The neurologic system is now clear. I want to see what the mental system is now doing. Put her back on the electroencephalonormotemograph, the EEG machine. Put her back on there. Now think about moving your leg and don't move it. And this the hay went haywire. The machine went nuts. He said, holy cow, we got something. So they developed a lie detector test. BJ Palmer, him and Keeler were buddies. So the cops used to bring over the bad guys in handcuffs, lay them down. He said, the only reason you're stealing, cheating, hurting, and doing bad things in the world is because you're subluxated. It's true. 
If you're a taker and you're not doing constructive things in the world, you're so excited in thinking. BJ called it straight line thinking, which is the nervous system is working free of any compromise. And so the mental impulse can get to every cell, organ, and tissue of the body. I believe God is love. That's an innate above, down, inside out. That's how that works. Innate does not flow. You know, they say, oh, innate's flowing. Innate's just on or off. That's how it rolls. The mental impulse flows. It's like, oh, look out, what a great thought. Where'd that come from? And forget about now where it came from. We can debate that forever. How did it get into our body? Through my fingers, through my nose, through my brain. Where'd it come in? So we don't think about that as doctors. You know, Doc, I've got this thing. Can you help me? I don't know. Doc, you know my daughter has cancer. Can you help me? I don't know. You know, I've got headaches. Can we help headaches? You know, can we, you know most of the are like, yeah, I help headaches. We can help headaches. So what if I told you that I just started somebody last week, 28 years old. She has two tumors in her brain. She has migraines. But her headaches are due to two tumors. Now can you help her? All of a sudden it changes. I don't care what you have except one thing. You have a subluxation. And when you're subluxated, what does that mean? That your body's in a compromised state, it's growing into something abnormal. I use your chiropractor set up the environment so it can thrive and adapt to the environment that you put it in. You stress your own environment. We all have internal stressors. You do our own stressors. And so one of the things that I do is, oh wow, that's a beautiful spine. I'm not too concerned about the spine, I'm concerned about what's inside of it. As should you be. And so when I look at the spine, this is how I educate people. Curve, discs, shapes, joints. It's just general stuff what I'm looking for. What's the next slide? And so when I look at certain things, yep, again, next slide. Oh, there was a tempograph. There we go. There's the electroencephalon nerve of tempograph. Look at that. So it's a machine that they put on people. Has anybody ever seen this? Wow, we got to read some green books. So when I see this, right, this is in his research clinic. See the grid on the wall? He had this copper shielding grid all around the entire room because right next door, he had the first radio station west of the Mississippi River. So the radio waves would interfere with his instrumentation. So to get rid of those frequencies, he put up a copper shielded booth and grounded the booth so he wouldn't have any variables with his data. The guy was way beyond his time. It was unbelievable. And so, next slide. So when I see people with the slides, next one. I don't know if we can hit play. Do you guys see this? What is that? What is it? Let's see if I can scroll with this. All right, x-rays. I've started eight chiropractors in the last two weeks. And so the chiropractors come on in. Those seven of the eight chiropractors do not take x-rays. And I don't understand why you would not take an x-ray. Right? There's a big battle of why you should take films because I'm not a chiro palpator. I can't identify that. Again, this is subjective. X-rays are not. Right? So when you take an x-ray, there's your picture. I can bring it to court. This is what you look like. I didn't make this. This is what you're living in. So you need to have some sort of objective data, the science of chiropractic. Look at this. See the cork in her mouth? Everybody have an AP open mouth film before? Uh, right? Well, the reason they did the cork in her mouth, she got radiated for 16 to 18 seconds. They were burning tissue. I mean, you smell tissue frying in that place. But they didn't know. Seatbelt, look at cars. They didn't have tempered glass before. People were shattering their heads. They didn't have seatbelts. Right? That's technology. He was the first person to ever x-ray the human spine. B.J. Palmer, 1910. First person that ever owned an, an x-ray machine, BJ. Chiropractor, for us. And all the things that he did, and all the craziness. So there's this chiropractor, has a party. Having a few beers, having a good time, has his party. And he gets liquored a little bit, takes this woman's neck and goes, wham! And she drops on the floor and paralyzes her. Right, totally rotary, diversified, snaps this girl's neck. And she was part of vaudeville. Vaudeville was a group of about 5,000 people that did a bunch of skits, circus acts, that kind of thing. And so she had a party, so what vaudeville do? Start making skits and circus acts on how chiropractors paralyze people. BJ lost it, like we're gonna lose everything here. Everything we've developed, we're gonna lose. So what did he do? He created something called a palmogram. Instead of a telegram, it was a palmogram. Palmogram was a sheet of paper, a little postcard, a piece of paper, bring that woman to me, I wanna take care of her. In the event you bring her to me, I wanna take care of all 5,000 of you on my dime. 